Welcome to Class Live. Class Live is an engaging interactive seminar space that enables teachers and students to participate in a real time classroom experience. Let's take a look at what the Class Live space looks like. Over here on the left is the participant window. The names of all students and instructors show up here, along with symbols that show whether their microphone and cameras are enabled. If students raise their hands, clap, or smile, you can see it here. In addition, the microphone icon lights up in yellow so you can keep track of who's speaking. If students don't have a microphone or want to ask their instructor a private question, they can write a message to the chat window located here. Instructors set the permission level so they have control over who can speak with whom and whether those conversations are private or shared with the group. Down here are the audio controls. The button on the left enables students to activate their microphones and start speaking to the group while the controls help adjust the volume of the room, both as a listener and as a speaker. Over here is the whiteboard, the main instructional space. Students may view their teacher's PowerPoint presentations covering key topics here. Learning is further encouraged by the use of whiteboard tools to emphasize important concepts. These tools are great for encouraging creativity and interactivity within a session. In addition, students may take notes during each session. All of the notes they take are organized by session and accessible anytime they're in class live. It's also possible to export notes to a computer so students can use them even when they're not logged in. Students also have the opportunity to use Class Live's webcam functionality. If a student does not have a webcam, that student may still view the pictures of his instructor and classmates if that functionality has been activated. If a student misuses camera, text, or audio tools, that student can be blocked from using these tools by the instructor. There is also an application sharing feature where participants can share something on their computer with the group, such as a Word doc or PowerPoint, and a web tour where they can visit online sites that pertain to the lesson. Now we'll jump into an English class. Notice how the teacher uses the web tour and a poll to engage her students. Hello everyone. Today as we continue our reading of Hamlet, I felt we should take some time to do a close reading of the famous to be or not to be speech. It's one of the most famous speeches or soliloquies in the English language, and I want to make sure that everyone fully understands it. Let's begin by watching Kenneth Branagh's interpretation of the first few lines. In this scene, you'll see that he's talking to himself. In a play, this is called a soliloquy, where the actor reveals his innermost thoughts to the audience by speaking them out loud. To be... Okay, great. Now, Mr. Braun did an amazing job conveying emotion, but how many of you feel comfortable translating this into modern language for me? I'd like you to answer yes or no by clicking the green check mark or the red X in the participants area. Okay, great. Now, thanks for answering. Let's see how everyone in the class responded. Well, I'm not actually that surprised. Shakespeare can be pretty tough. But let's work together and see what we can figure out. This next short clip will demonstrate a teacher providing instruction by using a PowerPoint. You'll also see how the whiteboard encourages interactivity and see students raising their hands and using audio tools to participate in the discussion. We're looking at the first five lines now, and before I even start to look at the individual words, let's look at the big picture. What do you notice about the way the sentences are constructed? Yes, Louisa? Um, do you mean he's asking two questions? Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Let's start with the first one. To be or not to be. Any ideas about what Hamlet is asking here? Yes, Alexi. I think he's saying, should I live or should I die? Okay, so you're interpreting to be to mean to be alive. Great, I agree. And, and he's trying to decide between two options. Well, let's keep going. Jane, can you read the second sentence aloud for me, please? Sure. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them? Now, how does that question relate to the first question? Yes, Alyssa? 
I think he might be asking the same thing, but just expanding on his original question, to be or not to be. Uh, he's just being more specific. What do you mean by that? It's to be means he's going to continue living. That means he'll have to keep suffering. And that's why he says he'll have to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Okay, so what are the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune in Hamlet's case? And wh why do you think he would use that kind of war imagery? Well, the war imagery could be showing how he feels like he's under attack. And that's appropriate because... Most likely because he feels like his home is being invaded by his uncle who murdered his father. Excellent. Okay, now let's take a look at the second half of that question, beginning with the word or. What is Hamlet's other option? Yes, yeah, Samya. I guess he can end his problems by taking arms against the sea of troubles, whatever that means. Any ideas? What if we go back to the original question? Yes, Matt. Well, maybe he's thinking about suicide, and the sea of troubles is all of his mounting problems in his life. Right, so taking arms would mean to arm himself with a weapon. Okay, great, so let's look at the summary here of, of what we did with the first passage. You guys did a great job doing a close reading of that passage, and now you're ready to work with a partner and do your own translation with additional lines from this soliloquy. So let's go ahead and get started. One of the great things about this platform is that it actually allows teachers to divide students into rooms to do small group work, just like they would in a traditional classroom. We call these breakout rooms. Let's take a look. Okay, class, I've created some breakout rooms for you to do work with a partner on your translations. Feel free to use online dictionaries to help you with any words you don't know. You'll have approximately eight minutes to write up your translations, and then I'm going to bring everyone back into the main room, and you will present to the group. So let's start with Samia and Louisa. I'd like for you to work on lines 61 through 70. Matt and Alyssa, I'd like you to do lines 71 through 85. And finally, Jane and Alexi, you'll be getting lines 86 through 94, starting with thus and ending with remembered. Okay, I'm setting the timer for eight minutes, and we're going to go ahead and get started. And I'll start jumping into the groups in just a couple minutes. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and check on my first group here. Hi, Samia and Louisa. Wow, it looks like you're making great progress. Do you have any questions for me? I wasn't sure about there's the rub. I've heard that expression, but I don't get what it means here. There's the rub means basically that's the problem. In this case, Hamlet sees the basic problem with dying is that we don't know what's going to happen next. Okay, finish up your slide, and I'll be pulling you back in in a couple minutes. In the next portion of this lesson, we'll see students uploading their PowerPoint slides into the whiteboard area through application sharing. Okay, so time's up. I'm going to go ahead and bring everybody back into their the main room to share the translations with one another. Okay, let's hear it from our first group, Samia and Louisa. Okay, we translated our minds as follows. To die, perhaps, is just like falling asleep. All the pain we endure as humans would be gone. Wouldn't that be great? Just like sleeping and dreaming, but wait. Because what kind of dreams do you have when you're dead? Thinking about that makes us realize we don't want to die. That realization makes us put up with our suffering and live out our lives. 